Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Tiki, and in this video we're going to create a PHP file upload form. Here's the outline of all the steps that we're going to be completing to create our PHP file upload. And as you can see, the first step here is to create HTML form that lets the user select a file from their computer and submit it to the server using the post method. I also have my notes about uploading files here and if I scroll down here to HTML you can see what the actual HTML form is going to look like and some of the important uh, things to note about the form is that it's got a ENC type equals multi part form data and what this means is basically it's used when a form requires binary data like the contents of a file to be uploaded so that's one thing and then the method is going to be post to post the entire form content to the server so that we can access it inside of a global array called files and uh, this is what an example files look like so it's got a name type temporary name error and size and we're gonna go over this uh, later on and then we're gonna use the move upload file function to move the file from this temporary directory here inside of our images folder of the of this uh, the location where the script is located okay so our form is also gonna have a type file uh, input type file which is uh, what lets the user select the file from their computer and uh, finally it's going to have a submit and uh, that's to just submit the form all right, so let's go ahead and get started with the coding. I'm going to open up NetBeans, go to New Project, and choose PHP. I'm going to name this project File-Upload. And I'm also going to create a directory. So before creating the project, I'm going to create a directory here in my Apache folder called File-Upload. And my Apache for folder is under C localhost. So that's just to make sure that we can run PHP files from Windows. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and browse to that folder that I've just created under localhost, file upload, open, and go to next, and click finish. Okay, so the source, of, source files folder is where all of our files will be located, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file called index PHP and I'm gonna select Chrome as the browser to view our code and uh, let's create basic HTML now PHP file upload for the title and let's create the form action is going to be empty because the form is going to be submitting to itself method is going to be post to post the contents of the form to the server and then that ENC type multi form forward slash form data and I'm gonna go back and make sure yeah that's that's all we have here make sure I haven't misspelled it oh I, I did misspell it okay okay this is how it looks like multi part form data next let's provide the input type equals file to let the user select the file from the computer and also it's important to name this field to be able for us to access this variable later in the program as we start coding PHP and finally input type equals submit for the submit button and let's change its value to upload just to change the text of the button okay everything looks good let's go ahead and view it in a browser and this is what our HTML form looks like so far of course it's not going to be working, but it lets the user select the file from their computer just like it's supposed to, and we can submit it to the server. Now let's go ahead and actually capture the data with uh, PHP. So let's go ahead and open up PHP tags here. And here is where we're going to be checking if uh, the form has been submitted and if the files global variable exists so going back to the outline we've already created the form and the next step is to make sure the files global array is set 
So is set just checks if the variable is set and is not null. And then the files global array is an associative array of items uploaded to the current script via the HTTP post method, which is exactly what our form is doing. And here's an example of uh, what that files array might look like. So let's go ahead and check if that file if that files array exists here with a we're gonna say if is set files and then we're also gonna say user file because that's the name of our field here so we're making sure that this field exists and it has been submitted and then we can go ahead and print print r the files array with a print r function gonna go back to the browser and as you can see now it's uh printing out the array but let's go ahead and create um, a user defined function to just so that the contents of the print are are a little bit more readable so here's what we're going to do we're going to say function pre underscore r and it's basically going to do the same thing as a print r and it's going to use print r but additionally it's going to also print out the html pre tags and this will make it uh make the data more readable for the user okay and here we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and rename this function to pre r save the file and as you can see the array is a lot more readable now so if i select the file duck and then hit upload you you can see that it's printing out the file with its name, which is doc.jpg, its type, its temporary name, which is a temporary directory where the file has been uploaded. It's also giving us an error code. In this case, it's zero, telling us that the file has been uploaded successfully. And finally, the size of the file. So it's nice to see this array and uh, we can use this function to see the contents of our array. And it's pretty useful when debugging our code. All right, so here we have in our outline, we've made sure the files global array is set. Now the next thing we're gonna do here, actually let's skip over all the error checking uh, steps and go straight to the upload success message with, and move the file to the destination that we want it to move to. So we're gonna be doing this step and do the, all the error checking later. Okay, so here we're going to be using the move upload file function and what it does is it just takes the temporary name of the file that we just seen in the script which is this place so the file has been uploaded to this temporary directory and that's the name that we're going to get from the move upload file and specify that for our first property and for the second one we're going to say where we want our file to be moved which is inside the images folder of the current directory and we want to use the user file name which is the actual name of the file itself all right so let's go ahead and code that actually we can just go i can go ahead and copy this or no let me just type that with you might as well okay so move uploaded file file name is going to be the temporary directory just user file tmp name okay so let me just uh, quickly go over this uh, tmp directory from my notes you guys can see that under php i and i have two directives one of them is named upload tmp dir and the other one, the other one is named upload max file size so these are the directives that we modify inside of our PHP INI file and the temporary directory, as you can see here, here, files will by default be stored in a server's default temporary directory unless another location has been given with the upload TMP dir directive in PHP INI. And another important thing to note is that the file will be deleted from a temporary directory at the end of the request if it has not been moved away or renamed. So you won't find that file in the temporary directory because it's deleted right after the request is completed. So unless we move it, it's not going to exist. And the way to find your temporary directory is you can go ahead and open your PHP INI file. Mine is located under cphp, php.ini. 
gonna go ahead and open that and search for upload and as you can see here there's that directive upload TMP there I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment this line and now we have a custom temporary directory and this is an optional step you can leave it as default it doesn't really matter but in my case I'm gonna specify it as a temporary as a custom directory you can also specify the max file size that you want to allow I'm just gonna leave it uh, as default with two megabytes and then go to services on Windows to restart Apache Apache 2.4 right click restart and this will update the uh, Apache with a new PHP INI information okay so for the destination we're gonna go ahead and go to our project and under source files I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder where we're gonna be uploading our images folder and name this folder images so from the temporary directory here's where we want to move our file it's going to be inside images images folder and uh, also we're gonna use the files name which is the actual name of the file and uh, that's how we're gonna move the file from temporary directory to the directory that we let's try Fox again okay so now it worked okay so so the error zero means that <clears throat> there's no error and the file uploaded with success so we can go back to the images folder and you can see that fox.jpg is in fact in this folder so so that's the image upload and that's really all we need to upload our files using PHP however we can now check for all kinds of uh, errors to make sure that the extensions are correct and uh, we can also ch check for all kinds of other errors that are um, that are listed under upload messages here and we're gonna take advantage of all these error constants by creating an array called PHP file uploads errors and what it does basically is just takes all these error values like 0 1 2 3 etc and it creates messages out of them so we're gonna take advantage of this array and uh, create that but first let's go ahead and um, let's go to outline and next thing we're gonna do is specify and check for the correct file extensions to be accepted and that's gonna be done with four steps the first one is gonna be to create extensions array with allowed extension types then we're gonna get the extension of file being uploaded using explode function from files user file name we can extract extension only from explode function using end function and finally we're gonna check if the extension being uploaded exists inside extensions array okay so let's go ahead and get started on that so first we're gonna create extensions array with allowed extension types so here let's okay so let's go ahead and say extensions equals array and then list all the extension types that we're gonna allow like JPEG uh, JPG uh, GIF and PNG so basically what I'm doing here is I'm allowing Im only images to be uploaded and those are gonna be our extensions let's also create a variable called ext error and set it to false by default our extension error is going to be false and then let's go ahead and extract the extension from we're gonna be extracting the extension from this user file name field so this is the part that we need here and we're gonna be using a function called explode in order to do that so we've already created the array we can check that off and now we're gonna be using the explode function and we're gonna be extracting the data from the files name so what this does is it returns an array of strings split by delimiter so we first provide a delimiter and then the text to be parsed so here in the example you can see that if we have a string of text like this 
separated by pipe. When we use the explode function and specify that the limiter as pipe, it's going to break down all the text into an array. And uh, yeah, it's going to create an array out of it. So that's what we're going to be using now. Okay, so file extension equals explode. Going to provide the dot because that's what separates the extension from the file name here. So that's going to be our delimiter. And then the actual file name itself, which is inside the files, user file and name. So let's go ahead and comment out our files array. And then let's go ahead and pre our file extension to see what we got so far. And as you can see, we have a fox which is the file name, and then we have an extension, which is the second value of the array. So that's working, and we can check off this part now. So we got the extension of the file being uploaded using explode function that we've extracted from our file's name. Now we're going to extract the extension only from explode function using end. And what end does is it gets the last value of the array. So if we got a set of values and just gets the last value of the array, which is what we need here. We need JPEG. And that's what we're going to do to extract the extension. Okay, so all we have to do is say file extension equals end file extension. And let's see what we got so far. And as you can see, we have the extension extracted. So that way we know that the file that's been uploaded, we know the current extension of the file has been uploaded, as you can tell here. So, all right, so that's working, and we now can match the extension of the file that's been uploaded with allowed extensions. Okay, so we can go back to outline and, and check that off, and check if the file extension being uploaded exists inside the extensions array. So what we can say here is if not in array, so if it doesn't exist inside of the, if this extension that has been uploaded doesn't exist inside of our extensions array, we're going to set our extension error to true because the extension is not found inside of our allowable extensions. So these are the extensions that we allow a list of extensions that we allow to be uploaded. Okay, so so this if statement is only going to be executed if the file extension is not in is not inside of uh, the extensions. Otherwise, extension error is going to be false and this if statement is not going to be executed because the extension was found inside of our extensions, which means that the error is false. Okay, moving on here back to the outline, we can check this part off and we can now check off the specify and check for the correct file extensions to be accepted. We're done with that part of the file upload. The next part is check for any errors inside of files and print those errors if they're found. And uh, we're also going to be creating an error messages array from the PHP upload error message codes. So we already have this array, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing. And I'm just going to paste it up here. So you guys can go ahead and pause the video and uh, type this up. So basically what it does is you can see all these values 0 from 8. And if I go back here to upload error messages, you can see all the 8 values and what they mean. So by itself, PHP doesn't provide the text messages. So we're creating an associative array based on those messages. And we're going to be printing out these, uh, these, this, this text later on in our script. So once again, um, if I go back here, you can see the error is zero because it's, uh, the file has been uploaded successfully. So that's the value here. And all the other errors are going to show up if uh, 
if something happened, like if the file exceeded the upload max file size directive in PHP, those are the numbers that are going to be associated with uh, with those values, and and we're going to be able to print out the associated text with those errors. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we got this array, and now we can go ahead and go to outline. So we already have this part completed, and um, actually we have. Yeah, we've created the error message array. And now we're gonna see if there's any errors inside of our files. Okay, let's go ahead and code that part. Okay, so if uh, files, user file error, so this, so, okay, so by default, user file error is going to be zero if the file has been uploaded. So, you can uh, check that here. So, value is zero, there's no error, the file has been uploaded. So, we can check that by simply creating an if statement. And, um, and so, if, uh, if the error is not zero, so, which is what this uh, if statement says, if the error of the upload is not equal to zero, then that means there are errors. And then we're gonna be printing those errors. And the way we're gonna be doing that is echo PHP file upload errors, files, user file to access our file has been submitted. And we're just gonna specify error. So once again, this part here in the case of success, or in the case of, uh, for example, an error one, where we are exceeding the file size, it's going to be one. So instead of this, it's gonna show up one here. And it's going to print out a appropriate error message because we've created this array and this is the text associated with value one, okay? We also wanna check if there's any uh, extension errors. So else if, extension error, if that is not equal to false, then we also wanna print out invalid file extension. And uh, if everything went well, then, then, it, then the uh, error is zero, so we wanna print out a success message where we wanna say, something like uh, success image has been uploaded okay all right let's go ahead and choose the file now so first we're gonna choose an image hit upload and you can see the success image has been uploaded and if I go back here to the projects you can see the bear that has been uploaded and let's select some other file type that we don't allow, like this book.pdf. Hit upload, and you can see the invalid file extension. And if I select a large file, for example, this one, try to upload it, it says the upload file exceeds the upload max file size directive in php.ini. So you can see that all that is working, and let's just upload another file, like fox, success, Check it out here in the projects. Fox has been uploaded. And so, and so that's working. And that's pretty much it for the PHP file upload. I'm gonna go back to the OneNote outline and check off all these other ones. And as you can see, uh, for the last step, I have make the error and success messages pretty with Bootstrap. So, I've omitted this step just to make this video a little bit shorter, but let me show you guys what that code looks like. So I'm just including the bootstrap up here, and then for the error messages, I'm just using the the CSS classes from bootstrap for alert danger, for the errors, and alert success for the success message. And this is what it's going to look like. So if I upload 
successfully it's gonna say success image has been uploaded and it's just a nice formatting and let me just uh, remove this here and uh, now if I upload a file which is um, which is gonna give me an error for example this executable it's gonna say invalid extension and you can see how it's nicely formatted now same thing if the file is too big file exceeds upload max file size so it just looks a little bit nicer with a bootstrap uh, CSS style and added on so I'm gonna check this um, message up here and you guys can go ahead and download uh, the source code once again from um, my patreon page along with OneNote notes which I think are going to be very very helpful memorizing all the code and what all these functions do so I've uh, organized them very neatly and uh, including all the global variables and even the pre R function that we've created I uh, also have this error uh, PHP file upload errors array and I've also included an extra class which you can uh, use to implement inside of your script and uh, I'm gonna cover that in another video on uh, uh, handling PHP errors but for now you can just uh, play around with this class here which basically does the same thing as this array alright guys if you found this video useful please like share and subscribe and don't forget to check out my patreon page for the source code and OneNote notes and I'll see you next time clever techie out